Hi. So with this video, I am going to start sessions on the class 8 portions and uh, today we are going to start off with the first session on uh, force and pressure. So we will actually cover the what, what do you mean by force, what are the different types of forces, what do you mean by pressure and uh, you know what causes pressure and what are the various aspects of pressure like what is the atmospheric pressure, how does it, what does it mean and uh, what are its effects uh, in, in the environment and in the def different phenomena in physics. We will also look at uh, aspects like buoyancy, right? And uh, we will explain why there is pressure in, uh, in, in the case of uh, solids, liquids and gases uh, in terms of the uh, kinetic theory of matter, right? So these are some of the things that we will discuss. We'll start off with the basic introduction about uh, force and pressure and then we'll get into more details. I hope you'll enjoy it. <coughs> so what exactly is pressure? What, what exactly is force? Right? So, uh, and that is what we're going to start off with. Right? So uh, I'm sure that we've discussed about force before. We have, uh, uh, you know, discussed about force, uh, velocity, acceleration, and all this at a very high level in uh, when you when you are in class seven, right? Now we are actually getting to a little more details. So what is force? So and what are the effects which basically the force creates, or what are the various effects which all force produces when it acts on uh, different bodies, right? So. That is what uh, we are going to look at first. So uh, I'm sure that we're going to deal with the exact definition of force and what it means and what are the, um, the what is the exact uh, equation using which the force can be computed. All these are things that we're going to learn later on when we get into what you call kinematics. And, uh, which is an area in physics where we will start discussing about classical physics, physics where we will have the three laws of uh, Newton, Newton's first law, second law and third law and once you learn that we will understand exactly force, how to compute force, what is the effect of this force and so on in, in terms of physics. But before getting into that let us just look at high level what are the various effects of a force. So if you look at force Force can move objects from state of rest, isn't it not? Let us take a simple example here, right? So if you go uh, and see here, uh, you can see that um, there is going to be a penalty shootout in a football match and look at what is happening to the ball, right? Now you have the ball currently here. So you have the ball here right now, right? And it is in the state of rest state of rest, right? It is not moving. It is in a state of rest. All right. Now, now what is going to happen to the ball as soon as he kicks it, right? Now, let us see that now. So he is going to kick the ball. So at this point, uh, the velocity of the ball is zero, right? It is not moving. And now he is going to kick the ball. Now, as soon as he kicks the ball, what is happening? His leg is applying force on the ball. And as soon as the leg is applying force on the ball, ball is changing from state of rest to motion and it moves forward uh, with a velocity, right? And it moves pretty fast. So, then in this case, he has really uh, managed to get it as a goal. All right. So, uh, so that is what, what I meant by the effect of force where it can change the state of the body from rest to motion and that's what you could see uh, you could see here right now uh, force can stop moving objects or slow them down of course that's the other aspect right so uh, if you look at the now another exp another example of effect of force where it is moving from state of rest to motion is a plane. 
before the getting into the aspect of uh, force opposing the motion i am actually talking about again another example now here you can see what is happening to the plane now plane is in the state of rest right right now the plane is in the state of rest you can see the two jet engines which are there on the plane the two jet engines and those jet engines are now going to apply force on the plane and you can see the plane starts moving and its speed is or its velocity is increasing so which basically means that what it means is its velocity let me just write it down here so the velocity is increasing or what you call the plane is accelerating so accelerating right so the plane is accelerating the reason why the plane is accelerating is because the two jet engines is exerting force to push the plane forward right so that is really what's going on so and as and when it's applying more and more force the plane's velocity is, is increasing so you can say the force is the force has changed the the, the plane state uh, from state of rest to state of motion, and since the force is up, is continuing to be applied on the plane, the velocity of the plane is increasing. So it's moving faster and faster. And as you go forward, you can find that after a while it takes off, right? So it's moving faster and faster. and then in the course of time it starts taking off and here you go you can see that the plane is taking off right so uh, so that's what I was talking about so you can see the effect of force right here so the so that's what I was talking about so the from this force can change the objects state from state of rest to state of motion and it and as the force continues to be applied on the uh, on the uh, object the object will start moving faster too and that's what we saw in the case of plane as the force as the jet engines were continuing to apply force on the uh, plane its velocity keeps on increasing it starts moving faster and faster and after a while when it gains certain amount of velocity uh, the the plane is able to start taking off now of course there are a lot of complicated aspects of aerodynamics in terms of how the plane is managing to take off from the ground right and that is something which is outside the scope of discussion right now right but we'll actually probably look at that later on uh, if we get to that right so uh, the other aspect is the force can stop moving objects or slow them down right now what does that mean now uh, you can see here an example right now I have a, a ball you can see there's a ball and the ball is is moving to and fro this kind of motion is called a simple harmonic motion but you can see that the amplitude or the the amount of amount the ball is moving away from the center keeps on reducing right and in the course of time you can see the ball will come to rest why is that happening right the reason why that is happening is because there is a force which is acting on the ball which is resisting or opposing its motion right it is opposing its motion so you can see here it, it, it comes and ultimately it stops right so it's, it's, it's stopping now the reason why that's happening is as a ball is rolling over the plate there is friction right so there is friction here so it's like this right so you have the plate like that and the ball is rolling sorry ball is rolling and the point of contact right point of contact between the ball and the plate there is friction there is friction and this friction is opposing always the frictions the the direction of the friction force will be opposite to the uh, direction in which the motion is happening so when the ball is moving this way when it is when the ball is moving this way the the friction will be this way 
right the friction will be acting in, uh, in this way and when the ball is moving uh, you know that way the friction will be this way always it will be opposing the motion so here again the friction is a force which is opposing the motion of the object and because of that the object slows down and in the course of time here you can see the object is coming to a state of rest so the force can change the object state of uh, from state of rest to state of motion and force can also change the object from state of motion to state of rest both are possible it depends upon in which way the force is acting if the force is acting along the direction of motion of the object um, versus whether the force is acting in opposite to the direction of motion of the object so both are possible and based on that uh, things will change okay so uh, i hope you understood here uh, what what uh, exactly is happening all right now force can change the direction of mo mo moving of the object that's the other thing now um, so uh, it's possible that i can use the force and change the direction of motion let us let us say a simple example i'm sure that if you are a cricket freak uh, you would have seen what you call a square cut right i'm sure you have seen what you call a square cut uh, so here you can see uh, Mahila Jayawardene, who was a, a pretty popular player in, in Sri Lanka, is he, I think he used to be the captain of the Sri Lankan team too, doing a square cut. Now uh, I think this is uh, Boye, one of the ballers uh, in South African team, uh, who was balling to Jayawardene, and uh, you can see what is really going to happen as as he is bowling, right? And see what is happening, right? So when he was bowling. The ball was going in a different, a specific direction, and Mahila Jayawardene, using his bat, is hitting the ball. And as he's applying the force on the ball, the ball's direction is changing. So the force can also change the direction of movement of an object, right? So uh, you can see that we've seen that the, the the force can change the state of an uh, of a body from state of rest to state of motion. It can also change the state of the body from state of motion to state of rest and it can also change the direction of movement of a body right so this is a very good example where a, when a square cut is done it is changing the direction of a movement of the object right uh, and then you have the force can change the shape of the objects right so when i apply force a simple example is applying force on a spring right let us let us see uh, the simple video which in, in fact illustrates uh, the application of force on a spring. So here, uh, this professor is in fact demonstrating, um, you know, what is happening, and you can see this is actually a spring, and he is just going to hook weights onto the spring and you can see what happens as and when he's hooking more and more weights the spring starts expanding now why is that happening what is the reason so he has put one small weight and he's measuring the length of the spring right and okay fine and then now he's going to put a bigger weight right and when he puts a bigger weight you can see what is happening to the spring the spring is expanding or extending not expanding extending and which means it is going through a change in shape why why is that happening the reason why that's happening is because you've got weights and when he is putting the weights what's happening the weight on these weights acts on the gravitational force right and because the earth is pulling the weight the weights down the weights will pull the spring down isn't it so you have the uh, weights here and there is a gravitational force acting on the uh, gravity acting on those weights and because of which it's pulled down and because the, the, the weights are being pulled down and weight is, is connected or hooked on to the spring those this weights will pull the uh, uh, you know weights will weights will pull down the spring and when the weights pull down the spring what in fact happens is that the spring extends or the spring will undergo a change in shape. Now that's precisely what's actually going on, right? So, uh, all right, fine. Now, uh, let, us, let us continue the discussion here. So, we have seen the different effects of the force, pretty straightforward. 
Now let us get into the definition of force. What does a force mean? Right? A force is a pull or push which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body or changes the direction or shape of a body. Direction of motion, in fact, it should be. Right? So uh, I think I missed that. Direction of motion. Okay? Direction of motion or shape of a body. Now, what does this actually mean? Now, the, the changes aspect is something which I have already shown in all the videos. But what do you mean by tends to change? Now, for that, I want to, uh, I can explain as follows, right? Assume that, um, assume that I, this is a surface, right? And uh, on the surface, so this is a surface. Usually, surface is different. Is is represented like this. This means that it is fixed; it cannot move, right? And on that, um, assume that um, I have a body. So this is a body kept, right? Oops. It's a body kept on the surface, right? Now, it can be a block of wood or something right so assume that's a block of wood now what I do is using my hand right using my hand I try to push this so I'm trying to push this which means that I'm applying a force so right I push it now if it's a heavy block initially when I push the body is not moving the reason why it's not moving is because there's also force of friction right because uh, Just a moment. Okay. So there is force of friction which is acting uh, because there is a contact surface between the block and the ground or the surface on which it is resting. So there's a force of friction. Initially, when I push, the body is not moving, but it is tending to move, which means it is almost going to move, but it's not moving. Right? So tends to change. So, when I try to push the block initially, when there is a small force, small force, right, the friction is big enough to resist the small force. So, uh, the small force and friction gets neutralized, so the body is not moving. So, in which case, when a small force is applied, body is tending to move. So it's not really moving, but it's, it's tending to move. It's, it's almost going to move, but it's not moving. So that is what it's tending to move, right? So when a force is a, uh, so when I apply a force, so it's, it's not that I apply a force, but the body is not moving means there's no force applied. That's not true. Force is applied. When I apply a force, doesn't mean that the body has to move. It depends upon the situation. When I apply force, assume that I push, try to push the wall. Does it move? It doesn't. But that doesn't mean I'm not applying force. When I'm trying to push, I'm trying to push the wall. The ball is tending to change the state of rest, but it is not. Why? Because of because uh, there, there are there is cement between these bricks, and they are holding all these bricks together, and it requires enormous force to push a wall. Right? It, it's impossible uh, for a person, human beings, to just push it across. So that is what it means. So I hope you understood what does tends to change mean. So when I apply a force, doesn't mean a body has to move. It can also tend to change the state. That means it is it, it's almost going to change the state, but it is not due to whatever reason. Right? It could be because of friction, could be because of whatever other reason. I hope you understood what I meant. Uh, so let me just uh, so I hope you understood the, the definition so which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of a body now what is the other what does this mean uniform motion of a body right now it is possible that the body is moving with a uniform velocity 
right? So the body is moving the uniform velocity, and if I apply a force on that body which is moving with uniform velocity, what happens is that it starts moving faster, like what you saw in the case of a plane, right? So always when a so either the odd body is in a state of rest when I apply force, the body can tend to change its state of uh, rest to state of motion. And if it is already moving at the uniform velocity, if I apply a force on it, it can actually start accelerating or it can start moving faster with a higher velocity, right? So that is what that means. So both are the possibilities when I apply a force. So it can change the state from rest to, uh, to motion or if it is already moving the uniform velocity, when I apply a force, it can start moving faster with a higher velocity. Or if I apply a force in a direction opposite to the motion, then it can also start moving with a lower velocity. Both are possible, right? So it, it, that is basically what it means. I, po I hope you understood uh, these aspects and it changes direction. That is another possibility. You saw the video of a square cut where, you know, the, when the batsman hits the ball and applies a force on the ball, the ball's direction is changing. In fact, in this case, it is not only direction, its velocity also is changing. It is, uh, in the magnitude of velocity is changing. Of course, as you know, velocity is a, is a vector quantity, so it's got both the quantity and direction, both as a part of it. And so, when you, when an object is moving with a velocity of 2 meter per second it, towards north, and I apply a force and it starts moving 2 meter per second towards west, still the velocity has changed because its direction has changed. This is something which I have explained very clearly in the sixth standard physics topic. If you want, you can actually go and look at uh, the uh, time and motion video where I have really explained about the velocity and the basics of what is a scalar and a vector quantity. If you want, you can definitely go and see that. All right. So, um, I hope you understood the, uh, the uh, what I meant was uh, for 7th standard, okay, so the videos in 7th standard time and motion, not 6th, I'm sorry. So I hope this this this, this uh, particular definition is clear and uh, let us get into the, uh, next uh, s slide uh, which in fact speaks about the two high-level classification of forces, right? If you look at forces, it can be classified at a high level into two, the contact and non-contact forces, right? So they are the two very um, uh, uh, common classification, high-level classification of forces. What do you mean by contact and non-contact forces? In fact, I'm not planning to spend a lot of time on this because it's very simple, right? So contact forces is where uh, typically, um, you know, if you look at a force, it could be either a push or it could be a pull, right? And in the case of contact force, contact forces, the force is in contact with the body. So that is what is a contact force. Whereas non-contact forces are forces where it need not be in contact with the body. If it has to, uh, to if it, the force has to act on the body, it need not be necessarily in contact with the body. And the example of non-contact forces is forces like gravitational force, magnetic force, electric force, and so on. Right. So all these are examples. If you look at a, uh, so let us let us look at this uh, initially. So if you look at push, always acts through a rigid body. What does that really mean? Right. Now. Let me let me go and uh, go back and explain what that means, right? So uh, let me change the color to white. Okay, now uh, and uh, let me draw this. So so I oops. Okay, now I draw a line. So here I have a line which I have drawn. And uh, on that, I will draw a cart. So it's a cart. It's got wheels. Okay, now I have got a cart like this, right? Now the cart has got. Um, a 
cart has got a handle here oops okay so cart has got a handle here like that which is made so this is made of steel this is a rigid handle right and cart also has a rope tied like that right so both are available with the cart now i want to pull this cart if i want to pull this uh, first assume i want to push this cart if i want to push this cart assume that i push it i push the rope like that will it move will the cart move it will not what will happen to the rope rope will start becoming like that that's all but the cart won't move right so so that is not what i want if i want to push i want to always apply a push on a rigid handle or a rigid body so push has to always happen on a rigid body or on a rigid handle or rigid connector which is connected to that body right so always the the push should be through a rigid body whereas think about pull right so what about pull if you look at pull i can do the pull on a non rigid uh, connector or a rigid connector both of them right so here i am pulling the rigid handle but i can also pull using a, a rope what will happen the rope will uh, this this kind of a rope will ultimately become like that right like that i can keep pulling right sorry i can keep pulling right so if you look at a pull i can use a non rigid or a rigid uh, body to pull right um so and i can use a rigid connector or a non rigid connector pull but for push i always have to use a rigid one otherwise it doesn't work so that's basically what uh, i uh, meant in that slide what i meant there right pretty simple and straightforward be a common sense i'm sure that you're already aware of this so uh the 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 so the push always acts through rigid body rigid body is something which does not deform right if you look at the rigid steel handle will not deform whereas a rope which is connected will deform right so it is it's not like a rigid uh, thing which cannot it changes its shape right so um that i think i need not explain that i think it's very obvious right so pushing a cart can be only using a rigid handle but pulling can be through a rigid handle or a non rigid handle like a rope right both are possible that's basically what these two points are right contact forces we apply force on a body directly or through a connector so always when you want to apply a contact force uh, on a body either you directly apply on the body or you apply on a connector which is connected to the body like if you look at the the cart example i showed the rope is a connector which is directly connected to the body and on that i am applying a force right so always a contact force should be directly applied on the body or should be applied to a connector which is connected to the body so that's about contact forces but what about non contact forces if you look at gravity for example when uh, when a apple is uh, a mango is falling from a mango tree you know that you say that it is because of gravitational force does the earth have a hand which goes and pulls that uh, um you know mango down physically no you don't see anything like that there is a invisible force there is a invisible force which is acting on that body right and it is acting through the space there is no nothing like a contact force there unlike the uh, the examples of um, you know pulling of a cart which i talked about right same thing is with magnetic force assume that i have a uh, a magnetic material like a uh, small block of steel kept and i bring a magnet near it you can see that suddenly the steel block moves towards the magnet and then sticks to the magnet again there is a invisible force which can act over space and it is not a contact force it is not that magnet is in contact with the metal block but it is that there is a invisible force which is in fact because of the magnetic field which is around the magnet which which makes it attract the the steel block 
same thing is true with electric forces right there is for example one example is electrostatic force right uh, which we, so i am not explaining about gravity and magnetic force you are i, I think already aware of it right i am going to just give an example of electric force or what you call electrostatic force in this particular video so here what you have is lot of pieces of paper and you have a plastic comb i am sure that many, some of you might have already tried this experiment right at home right it's a very when i was child i initially when i tried this for uh, uh, out i was in fact amazed and uh, really you know was excited to see what is really going on right now uh, so you have a plastic comb and you have some piece of paper right and uh, you can see initially the plastic comb is not attracting the piece of paper now what uh, we are going to do is we are going to uh, use take the comb and rub it against uh, a, a cloth a cotton piece of uh, piece of cotton cloth right and then what is really happening is when this is going on the the comb is when you are doing that uh, rubbing uh, the comb is becoming electrically charged what you call the electrostatic charge it starts having electrostatic charge and you can see it starts acting as if like a magnet it is really you know the the, the we can see the paper the piece of paper will start jumping and start sticking onto the comb and that is basically electric force again the electric force is non contact force it it acts like a magnet it attracts the piece of paper where and it it, it does in it some invisible force which is non contact force which is acting so uh, you can see that contact force and non contact force is a very high level classification and if you look at contact force one very clear example for a contact force is a biological force right or what you call the muscular force when you are trying to uh, pull a spring right uh, or chest expander i'm sure i don't know whether any or how many of you have tried out chest expander in exercise you have got something called a chest expander which allows you to uh, give exercise to biceps and the chest muscles right again it's nothing but spring you are expanding a spring again you are using the muscular force of your biceps and triceps and uh, the uh, chest right to to expand the chest, the, the spring that bullocks plowing a field again is biological force the muscular force of the bullocks is is what is acting on the plow and through which the 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 plow is plowing the field uh now it is also possible that the muscular forces are applied through tools like uh, assume that i want to nail uh, a nail onto a wall i will keep the nail and then i will use a hammer and the the muscular force of the muscle is acting on the hammer and then the hammer goes and hits and applies force on the nail and the nail goes into the wall so you can also use tools to apply the force similarly when you want to cut the vegetables you use a knife to cut the vegetables right and again there you have the muscular force acting on the knife and the force of, uh, and uh, that force uh, which is applied on the knife the knife is applying on the vegetable and the vegetable gets cut right so all these examples of of biological forces where the muscles is are the the main the reason for apply application of the force now what about uh, another the next class next important classification of contact force that's what is called the mechanical forces right forces generated by machines for example how do, when you are, uh, when when you have a a bike right or um, uh, or a car right which is moving now you have the engine the bike engine which could be a petrol engine or a diesel engine similarly a car engine which could be a petrol engine or a diesel engine which in fact is applying force on the bike or car to make it move now how is it able to generate this force is because it is using energy for example if you look at a steam engine right uh, i'm sure that you would have seen the steam locomotives at least uh, some in movies right um, so I don't think I have it here. Anyway, so I'm talking about a steam engine. I'm sure that uh, you have already. Uh, excuse me, just a moment. Sorry for that. So.
So let us look at the uh, the the okay. So the steam engine, right? So if you look at a steam engine, which is the old steam locomotives, where the coal used to be the fuel, the coal used to burn. It used to create heat, and that heat was used to boil water, and steam is produced, and that steam is used within the steam engine to generate force. Right. So again, the energy of the coal is ultimately what is used to generate the force. Similarly, petrol engine. Petrol is the energy in the petrol uh, is is converted uh, into the force. Right. So the petrol uh, in, in very simple terms. Right. Similarly, windmills. I'm sure the windmills you have seen the huge fan-like things where the wind wind blows, it starts rotating, and that rotation of the windmill. Uh, is con and the, the windmill is connected to a generator yeah, and the generator can produce electricity again the the energy which the wind has is what is used to actually rotate the windmill right so all these are examples hydroelectric power generation again you have the water uh, water stored in a dam and the da and then the water flows down and it that high velocity water which flows down goes through a tunnel uh, sorry a turbine and tur and rotates turbine and turbine is connected to generator which generates electricity right again here you can see that there is a mechanical force which is applied by the running water onto the uh, turbine so all these are examples of mechanical forces which are again contact forces where the force is in con contact with the object which is being moved right um, the other example is the force of friction we have i think already discussed quite a lot right about uh, force of friction a rock resting on a mountain right how is the rock resting because there is a friction force between the uh, the the bottom surface of the rock with the surface of the rock on which it is resting right and that frictional force is opposing the gravitational force otherwise the the block the rock should have slid down because of the gravity right it's not happening because gravitational force is opposed by the friction force between the uh, bottom surface of the rock and the top surface of the rock on which it is resting and because of which it's not moving down it's state of rest uh, so again force of friction is acting there similarly your cycle you stop stop pedaling cycle after a while you can see that the cycle start decelerating again because of the force of friction between the tire and the ground and that that is acting against or uh, opposing the movement of the cycle and the course of time the cycle starts decelerating and it, it even stops after a while if you stop pedaling while you're pedaling it's not happening is because while pedaling you're applying force so you're continuously applying force to uh, get over the frictional force and so it, it just keeps moving rolling a football or a, or a cricket ball you just roll it on a ground and you can see that it starts rolling and slowly its, its velocity starts reducing and after a while it, it stops moving right comes to a state of rest again because of the friction right the um, that friction is called the rolling friction where there is a friction between the ball and the ground which is opposing the motion of uh, the the rolling uh, football and that is why the football comes to a state of rest so you can see the force of friction is another contact force definitely contact is required between two surfaces for the friction to happen it's because of that uh, the friction happens so these are all examples of contact forces so we have seen uh, biological force like the muscular force and mechanical force like you know the different variety the the petrol engine diesel engine and so on steam engine and all that uh, which contact force where the force generated is directly acting on the body and then you have the force of friction right all these are examples of contact forces uh, what about non contact forces right now uh, first example which i want to give you is the gravitational force right and a gravitational force is a, a very common example of non contact force where the bodies are not in contact with each other right and that is example of gravitational force and in fact um, the force or pull by which a object is attracted towards the earth is called its weight so the amount of force with which the earth is pulling you down right is what is called your weight body weight as you call it, right so that is the force with which the the earth is pulling you down or pulling pulling towards it right and all objects all bodies are pulled towards the earth by the earth's gravitational force and it is in fact a invisible non contact force it is not necessary that you are in contact with the earth for the gravitational force to happen right you may be 
um, you know, just floating in air and you are pulled down, right? You jump a plane from a plane or you jump from a staircase. You are not in contact with earth, but earth pulls you down. So that is gravitational force and it's a non-contact force. Uh, I want to give you a simple example, right, um, of gravitational force and its effect. Look at this. Uh, here you can see that here you can see that you you have a tennis ball. You are assumed that standing in, uh, on the terrace of your terrace of uh, of your house. And first thing what you do is you simply drop the ball down. So you you just hold the ball and just leave it. You can see that it it just goes down like that, right? Along a straight a vertical line down and directly the earth is pulling it down to gravitational force but assume that instead of just leaving it like that what you're doing is you're throwing the ball okay sorry assume that you're throwing the ball in this direction so you're throwing the ball which means you're applying a force on that ball in this direction so now force is applied in this direction now what is really happening what your expectation will be okay the ball moves in this direction but that's not what happens the ball moves along a curve this is a curve it takes what you call a curved path and what is why is that happening it is taking a curved path because you have applied a force this way but there's gravity acting this way right and since the gravity is acting this way the gravity starts pulling the ball down slowly and so what is happening is that you can see that the ball also starts moving uh, down and that is why it's moving along a curved path which in fact this path is called a parabola where you learn this in geometry later on what a parabola means uh, in fact also in algebra in both of them so don't worry about it yeah, you will we'll discuss that later but you can see that the the, the ball is traversing through a curved path because of the action of gravity right <clears throat> okay the other thing which I want to uh, talk about was uh, the the action of gravity I want to explain was about the spring scale spring weighing scale right so this is what is called the spring balance I don't know whether they've used spring balance you can see uh, shopkeepers using it to weigh uh, objects Right, it's called the spring balance, and uh, you can see this is what a spring balance looks like. So, if you look at a spring balance, you can see that there is a pointer here, and you got scale, and you can see the, the things like one and five and ten and fifteen and all that written here as scale. Now, how does this really work? How does this really work? So, uh, if you look at how it really works, is as follows. So if you look at a spring balance, what it has is it's got a spring. So it's got a spring like that, right? And uh, and there is a pointer that you can see there, right? Uh, and here you have the scale. So initially it will be zero, right? Then you'll have scale like maybe five and ten and so on, right? Now what happens is that assume that and then it's got a hook like that. Now. Assume that what you do is uh, you hang a weight. So you hang a weight here like that. And assume that uh, this is 5 kg. So it's a 5 kg weight. Now when a 5 kg weight is hung on it, what happens is that the weight acts on it. Right? Why? Because it's a gravitational force. And as I told you, the weight of an object is the force with which the earth pulls it down. To the, due to gravity so and this weight acts on the spring and so it will pull it down so as soon as it pulls down what happens to the spring the spring extends so what happens now is the spring will extend a little it extends and it shows 5 kg right so it, it extends as you've seen the experiment where you're putting weight the spring is extending it's becoming longer and it's extending because of the weight which is acting on it. So that happens and it extends and now the pointer will be pointing 5 kg. So that's the principle with which the spring, spring balance work. And in fact, ultimately the spring balance working because of gravity, because of the gravitational force.
right? That's basically what it is. Okay. So I hope you understood about the spring balance, right, and how it works. Again, because of gravitational force, which is a non-contact force. And then, um, one more thing which I want to uh, explain was about weightlessness. Now, you talk about weight, and weight, as you know, is the force which the Earth acts on a body, and all of us have weight, right, and you feel that you have weight, and your leg muscles is what supports you, and you're able to stand and walk and all that because of the muscles is supporting your body weight, right? Now, consider a situation where you are in a place where there's no weight, there's no gravitational force, right? Like, like these astronauts. So these astronauts are in a space shuttle, right? And they are far away from Earth. And you can see what is happening to them. They are completely weightless. See? Look at that. They are simply floating in thin air, right? Now why they are able to do that is because they, they don't, they, they are so far away from Earth where Earth's gravitational force is no more acting on them. The effect of Earth's gravitational force is no more on them. And because of that, they are feeling completely um, weightless. Right? If assume that you, he was on Earth, he would not have been able to float like this. Immediately, you, they would have uh, come down. You can see what, what is happening now. You look at this, he is just leaving some water from this pipe and see what is happening to the water. Even water is not falling down, but rather it is making a, it is becoming a big sphere of water and it is simply floating, right? And you can see that. And he is, he blew it and it split it into two drops and, and he can now decide to just simply take it in. And you can see he just took up the water inside. Look at that. So this is what weightlessness means. Very interesting state, isn't it? In a, in a space shuttle where there is no feeling of weight at all because there is the Earth's gravity is no more acting on them and they are simply floating, right? So that could be a possibility. I'm just, I just wanted to show what is the effect if there is no gravitational force. Okay. All right. Now, uh, <clears throat> You also have the electrostatic force, which I explained, right? I actually explained about electrostatic force, and I showed that experiment of uh, the, the plastic comb and piece of paper, and how the piece of paper were uh, attracted towards the plastic paper once you, we rubbed it on uh, a piece of cotton cloth, and you saw that it got some static, uh, uh, static charge, and it started attracting those pieces of paper. Now, that is electrostatic uh, force, um, and in fact, uh, there are places where the electrostatic force is used, like the electrostatic chimneys. I just want to show you how electrostatic chimney works, right? Um, so, this is how electrostatic chimney works. What happens is that, now this is smoke, and typically the industry smoke may have a lot of dust particles and, uh, you know, other particles in it. Right, there could be carbon particles and all those kind of particles, and it is, it's not good, it is not um, it, it, if it goes out into atmosphere, it will pollute the atmosphere. So to avoid that, what is done is there is what you call electrosta electrostatic chimneys used. What is done is when the smoke passes, uh, when it comes out of uh, the company or the, or the factory, it goes to electrostatic chimney and as it passes, there is what you call a negative grid. Now this is in fact, there is some electricity passing through it and what happens is that all these particles, the carbon particles, dust particles, all will get negatively charged. There is a way in which they get charged. Okay. Now, um, if you ask me questions on how that happens, we may have to get into uh, the atomic, uh, uh, the, the, the aspect of uh, the atoms and electrons and, and all that stuff. So let us not worry about that right now, right? But just understand that once it passes through this, what will happen is, 
all these particles inside right all the small particles inside they'll all become negatively charged negatively charged and that that is done by this negative grid negative grid to charge the smoke particle so they'll all become negatively charged and as and they go up and when it reaches here you you have a positively charged uh, positively charged plate right and what happens is that the negative charges are attracted by the positive plate a positively charged plate and so all these particles start sticking on this and slowly it starts falling down right so all this will start sticking and starts falling down and through this this all these particles which are there the, the carbon particles and the dust particles and so on which is there in the smoke which is coming out of the factory gets removed and the smoke which is coming out will not have any particles right so that is what is the electrostatic chimney and again this is the the force which is acting between the negative particle and the positive particle is electrostatic force again non contact force right so those are all examples of non contact forces i hope that you understood uh, this right uh, let me just i hope you understood uh, the contact forces and non contact forces what does force mean what are the effects of the force and so on we will continue in the next session about pressure right we'll start discussing about uh, what is unit of force what is uh, how is the force represented what are its units and um, you know uh, when force acts on body what uh, how do you compute what you call the resultant force and you know pressure what does pressure mean how does pressure act on objects and so on so we'll actually discuss all this in the next session thank you